I lived Let's Podcast. Alongside Joe Giglio, I'm Joe Ovias inside Eford Studios in downtown Raleigh. Thanks to Empire Properties and thanks to Copiers Plus. Check them out online at copiers-plus.com. No waivers that I need to sign today. Didn't need to do any of that stuff. Instead, I've been using that Kyocera to print off a bunch of like school waiver things, travel plans, and all that stuff. I've I've already had a morning. It's it's 9.23 in the morning as we record this. I know it premieres on YouTube at 2, 2 o'clock, but I've been up since 4.30 this morning, Joe. It's been a morning, to say the least. Dad life is real. Feels like a lot. It it's is raining. Lot, but nothing, I sur- nothing good ever happens when it rains. But I survived the four loco. My headache finally went away after another round of ibuprofen this morning. So I'm good to go. Good to go. Although, I might get a headache when we get around to talking about Mike Krzyzewski. I might get a headache. I might get a headache. But we'll get to that in a second. Let's talk about more NC State because when you talk about NC State, everything goes up. Numbers go up. Okay. When NC State is good, I've been making this point to a lot of people. When NC State is good, it's good for business. Don't believe me? Look at the ratings. So the ratings for the Elite Eight showdown between Duke and NC State brought in record viewership. 15.41 million viewers on CBS, marking the best men's Elite Eight game since 2019. Also the best program on Easter Sunday in 11 years, dating back to a Duke-Louisville game that drew 15.6 million. That's according to Austin Karp, who I believe is now at the Sports Business Journal. Uh, my guy, Sports TV Ratings, uh, did, a, uh, did a little bit more context here because ratings continued to look a lot better. You, you keep seeing these new record numbers. Oh, it's a record amount of people. The first time it's happened in a decade. Reason for that is because of out-of-home viewing. For the longest time, Nielsen, who tracks television ratings, did not count the amount of people that were watching something at a bar or like how we watched it on Sunday night at the Rialto. You would guess what? There was like 400 people that were watching that, 300 people watching that at the Rialto. So all that was never really factored in in the past. But now that they do at a home viewing, people out at a family event, you know, we gathered, you know, Easter Sunday dinner, you've got 20 people over, you're going to watch the game. They now try to account for those types of things, which explains why you're seeing these ratings. But that's very technical stuff. I think the bottom line here is that the ACC and ACC fandom and ACC basketball does well. It's almost like it's hear me out here, Joe. It's almost like all of our obsession with football, football, football. We forget that a lot of old timers really do get worked up about basketball, which is the thing that ACC has been associated with for a very, very long time. When you tie that in with NC State doing something they haven't done in 40 plus years, you end up getting this kind of, you get this kind of number. Yeah, I mean, obviously NC State is the story of this tournament. They are, yeah. But you got to give Duke credit there because the the two comparison points were Duke games. Also, this time slot is the NFL late Sunday window time slot. Mm Mm-hmm. So let's not get too carried away. It might have you might have been able to put whatever teams in there and gotten that type of number on in that time slot on that day on a Sunday, the late time slot. Maybe in quite frankly, the second most popular gambling slash sporting event that we have Mm -hmm. on our calendar. I mean, the the same time slot last year got like eleven million. So the viewership was was up. Sure, the viewership was up. So I do think eleven is still a good number, though. It's not like oh no, I'm not saying yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying. Look, the the point that I'm making here is that there is still a draw to NC State, okay? When they're good, this is a point that I've been making for a long time. It actually, in a weird sort of way, makes you right when it comes to how we've talked about apathy and stuff like that around the program. A lot of people have been trying to feel good about this basketball program for a really long time. And when you got a good story baked into it with DJ Burns, for heaven's sake, it's only going to elevate this sort of thing. And I think it also ties into the point that I've been making about NC State when it comes to March Madness in general. It, it's a thing that uh, will forever be baked into their basketball story. When you talk about NC State basketball, you get stuff like this. I think you you had pointed out to me this Wall Street Journal story about the insanity that is uh, you know, NC State making this run. I think, you, yeah, you sent it to me. Basically, the possibility of being struck by lightning. Right. Mm-hmm. The National Weather Service says you're more likely to get struck by lightning during your lifetime. Chances of reaching the final four. UConn was a one in two chance. Purdue was a one in three chance. Alabama was a one in seven chance. What was NC State's? One in twenty three thousand five hundred and twelve, which yes. works out to 
4,000.004 thousandths. So when you put all that together, there you go. So I think people are trying, you know, sometimes I think we overthink what's going on with college basketball. NC State's not something to overthink. It's just a great story. And yeah. people love a great story. And we'll see what happens on Saturday night between them and Purdue. It's a nice combo. It's the story. It's the tournament. It's the mm-hmm. it's Duke, the brand of Duke. So I, those are all things that help. Now, speaking of college basketball and overthinking, is it overthinking to look at tournament results, the types of teams that go far in the NCAA tournament, and try to extract deeper meaning in what you have to be as a team I don't in order I, to succeed. I think Jay Wright has this one correct. So Jay Wright was on CBS after Kentucky got knocked out by Oakland. And now that we've seen more of this stuff kind of settled out, you look at the makeup of like NC State's squad. You look at what Purdue is as well. UConn and how they were built. Um, you start to wonder, well, wait a minute. Are freshmen no longer the thing? Are we now almost 10 years removed from the real era of one and dones? You know, Kentucky got that thing started. Duke finished the job in 2015 with their one yeah. and done team. But don't, what are don't we overlook Carmelo in, in Syracuse? You're right. Three. You're right. But here's uh, here's Jay Wright on that topic. Oh, hold on a second. Why is this not playing? Hold on. Let me unmute this. Let's try it again. And, and trying to play against older players is over. Like it, he did. A, I think he did a phenomenal job with these guys all year, getting them to be as successful as they were. You can see. They're playing against grown men. The guys on Kentucky will be far better pros than any of these guys on Oakland or any of these guys in the tournament. But they're not as good college basketball players. It's a, At this point in their career, they're not as disciplined yet as the guys from Oakland. And it's not Cal's fault. It's they're 18 years old. And they're in this era where everyone's telling them how great they are. Just show up in college and you're going to win. It doesn't happen that way. And the more the guys stay in college because of NIL, it's going to be tougher for young teams like this to be successful. So again, that was Jay Wright on CBS talking about Oakland beating Kentucky. And you might say, well, Kentucky, I don't care. But my <laughs> thought to you, my thought for, for us here is about Duke next year. Yeah. Because I do think Cooper Flag is going to be that guy. Mm-hmm. But the question is, can he be that guy while we still have the extra year of COVID eligibility? I'm, okay, I jotted I, that I down. I just don't know if they're... As J.C. Zembel has tried to explain to me, mm-hmm. like Duke just doesn't have the roster flexibility right now to say, go and get p- older helper helping parts, ancillary parts in the portal. Mm-hmm. Like if they're going to win next year, it's likely going to be with the whatever core returns plus these new parts. And I just find that to be like really hard to believe that someone as smart as John Shire would look at the results from this year and from what they were missing from this year's team Mm -hmm. and be like, well, it'll be different next year because, oh, because it's not a real reason. You brought up the COVID year. It's running out. Yeah, we we have two more years. We have two more years of this though, but it's in the meantime, do you take advantage of it? Right. Which I thought about something in our conversation with Brendan Marks of The Athletic yesterday. What kind of conversations are taking place at Duke right now? Okay. Are there conversations about, look, the makeup of the team is going to change because we are bringing in Cooper Flagg, who I watched a little bit of the McDonald's All-American game last night. He was fine. Uh, He wasn't exactly setting the world on fire. He was not one of the co-MVPs. I think he had like eight points, a couple rebounds, et cetera. But you can see it. I mean, that's not what the McDonald's All-American game is really about. It's just your chance to watch these guys. Are the conversations such that you go, look, guys, we had two cracks at this, didn't necessarily work out. You know, we salvaged somewhat of a season by getting to the Elite Eight, came up short, lost the state, whatever. But the the true makeup of this team is changing. So maybe you go somewhere else. Does like does Tyrese Proctor come back to Duke? No, I think he'll still go pro. Or does he go pro? Yeah, those types of things. I think Proctor, McCain, and Filipowski go pro. McCain probably goes. What about Caleb Foster coming off the injury? I I don't know. That's the thing. You don't know that freshman class. Other than McCain, was really underwhelming. Mm -hmm. So you have to decide, do you risk bringing them back and watching them take a bigger leap? Or do you try to go out and get an older player? I don't know. You know, the other part of that is Jeremy Roach. I, I would rather see Jeremy Roach come back if I'm Duke. And that could be your your veteran. But the thing about Jeremy is, while he was better this year, he's still, you know, Jeremy's at his best when he's like their fourth banana. Mm-hmm. Not the guy driving the bus, which sure. two years ago, he pretty much had to be. Mm-hmm. So I, I'll say this about... Uh, State, too, to go back a half a step for you. 
uh, Luke DeCock, News and Observer, our friend, wrote about, you know, Debbie Yao had hired uh, Kevin Keats and Wes Moore and like what else, you know, like let's let's tip our hat to Debbie for yeah, the we, success. We had texted Debbie about seeing if she wants to come on here yeah. soon, take a little victory lap for the success that, you know, hey, you, you hire two people now who have not only ACC titles on their resume, but uh, the Final Four. And then, you know, you factor in all the other coaches that she had hired. Mm-hmm. And I think that's important. It's not a zero sum game, though. Like some people are like, man, we got to. Well, we got to give Debbie credit, but we can't give Boo credit. Or we got to give Boo credit, but we can't give Debbie credit. No, you can give Boo credit. And, give everybody and, credit. And here's where you... This is where you give Boo credit. Because he did the same thing with Dave Dorn now. Mm-hmm. In 19, State struggled in football. I mean, they were they were a mess. And it was the second time he had a, an awful year where he won one ACC game or less. So you sit here and go, I, hey, man, we're going to move on. That would have been the easy play for Boo, the new AD. Instead, he went to Dave and said, how do I help you? Mm-hmm. You know, what can I do? H- how do I help you with your assistant? How do I help you with your staff? How do I make, how do I make you successful? And you saw an overturn in their staff. You saw a, a difference in how they, I believe, in how they recruit and retain and develop players. And a lot of that is a commitment to D'Antonio Burnett and the strength program that's mm-hmm. paid off for them. And you now see where NC State football, while Dave Doran hasn't won the ACC or a division title, he has NC State football in a position he's never been in since Lou Holtz. When, you know, you're running the wishbone and you got to beat six other teams in the league, for goodness sake. <laughs> okay, it's just not the same thing, <laughs> right. right? Right. So that's a credit to what he did. He, now he does the same thing in 20... Boo does the same thing in 22 with Kevin. Mm-hmm. It, Kevin had a bad year. They lost more games in 22 than any other eight NC State team in the history of the program. He easily could have gone to Kevin and said, hey, it's over. But instead, he went to him and said, how do I help you? Same conversation. And you see the, the staff that comes in. Joel Justice, Levi Watkins, uh, Kareem Richardson this year comes in. You know, like, th- these are big changes for them. They're, all, they're also changing, like, hey, in terms of, like, NIL, are we going to participate in this? Someone had asked me about Stanford the other day. Like, how did Stanford's whole roster end up in the triangle? And I'm like... Quite frankly, they don't participate in NIL. NIL. That's like a school level. While it's not from their funds, it's still a school level decision. Yeah. Look at the rest of the ACC. Like Wake Forest had to be dragged kicking and screaming into the NIL era. Mm -hmm. So you have to give Boo credit for going to those coaches, being patient with those coaches and saying, how do I help you? But you also give Debbie credit for hiring those coaches and identifying them at a time, by the way, where you and I have a disagreements about what NC State does and what NC State doesn't, mm-hmm. NC State probably could have avoided some of their misery by overpaying. That was a big part of their problem, particularly in basketball searches. Mm-hmm. NC State doesn't have as much money as some of their fans think they do. No, they don't. And I think that's kind of been laid bare here the last few years. Yeah, when we talked about to to for context here, when we talked about Kevin Keats's job status, yeah, know, if if NC State had unlimited money. I don't think the decision was a very difficult one to make, especially going into the ACC tournament. I'm not, it's one thing I don't want to do here. And it's actually kind of been bothering me with how some of this framing has gone. There's this kind of like, uh, like let's not act like there weren't real conversations taking place sure. before everybody left for DC and how people were talking about this team in the first half against Louisville. And a lot of okay. them were financially related. A lot of them are financially related. And yes, if you want to overcome the tough neighborhood thing, well, you can't pay me more. Right. Right. I mean, and, and that's, that's one thing that'll help me out here. Okay, but again, that also comes back to my questions about NC State. Well, what do you want to be? You know, oh, well, we're in this tough neighborhood. Well, there's a way to get out of the tough neighborhood. You it's usually pay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there oh, was a reluctance this, to do that. Right. Or, or, so, or an inability to you do get that. One you, of the two, right? No, sometimes you get you get what you pay for. Yeah. You get absolutely. what you pay for. But I think the higher, it's not just, okay, you hired good coaches. It's I, under the circumstances that you hired those coaches as well. I think you're burying the lead with Debbie. And this is what I want to talk to Debbie about when we eventually do talk. Because we are going to talk to Debbie. Yeah. There's a consistency when we talk about Debbie Yao and the what could have been and whatnot. Debbie's usually right with the coaches she's identified. I was going to say, even the ones she didn't get, she's identified good coaches. (laughs) Right. Okay. (laughs) Right. Right? Like she knew James Franklin was going to be something. All right. I mean, say what you want about James right. Franklin to Penn State, whatever. But the dude got to Penn this State. This was before. This this is before he had his success at Vanderbilt. Yes, she identified Chaka Smart as somebody yeah. like, hey, this is. Yeah. I want this guy. Debbie's Dave Doran too. Okay, mm-hmm. she identified Dave Doran coming out of Northern Illinois. Understood. Here's a young coach that I think is going to be this right. 
And Debbie's track record with identifying talent yes. is very, very good. Now, whether you can get the talent is another matter, which, of course, gets to a larger conversation about economics and everything else. NC, State's, I, NC State's problem has always been money. Always sure. been money. Hard stop. It is a that is that it's always been their issue, which goes forward. We can have this conversation when the final four wraps up because there is a what next? Sure. For NC State. What next? But I think after seeing well, Luca, I had no problem, obviously, with what he wrote. Sure. I just saw some pushback to, oh, like, well, what about Boo or or what? And it's kind of like they're different people. They oh, have, yeah, obviously yeah, have yeah, different yeah. but I think the school themselves, like they they struggle with recognizing their past. Right. Mm -hmm. And even someone like Debbie becomes like, oh, well, she was involved in the in the you know the NCAA case. So we can't oh. like, you know, and she comes back, she goes to Reynolds and, and she's not trying to be in the spotlight. I think some people could get confused about that, too. Like I, I talked to Kevin yesterday. And I was like, hey, you know, have you heard from Debbie? And he was like, yeah, you know, she's she she's tries supportive. Yeah. He's like, she'll send me a text, you know, here and there. He's like. You know, she's trying to stay out of the way because she doesn't want it to make it seem like it's about her. He's like, it's never really been about her. Yeah. Props to Debbie. Props to Boo. And props to Boo. Is props that, that, to was my, that was kind of my whole point. It doesn't also, have to and, be an either or. You know what I mean? And, and props to <laughs> and props to Mike Shashevsky for agreeing to a commercial that's been played all throughout March Madness. I have that, so many questions have, though, Joe. We've we've referenced this. So this morning, <laughs> while we were waiting to get some things going here, this morning. Um, I kind of fell down a weird rabbit hole. If you if you're kind of, if you've been watching the NCAA tournament, you've seen this commercial. That's uh, it's an army commercial. Yeah, it's it's recruiting for, yeah. for the army, and the whole premise of the commercial is essentially uh, you know put on a uniform for your basketball team is almost the equivalent of you know going and signing up and representing your country. I can't find the video for whatever reason. Like the commercial is not on YouTube, which put a pin in that. Uh, but I found a clip on somebody had done the phone to the TV thing on TikTok. So here's the audio of the commercial. If you need a refresher, put on that uniform. There's a sense of pride. You're not just wearing your last name. You're representing everything that got you here. Your family. Where you're from. Wearing that uniform makes a statement that you belong to something bigger. The Army. Okay, cool. Coach K, Army background, XYZ. So he's narrating. But who's <laughs> featured in this commercial? CJ McCollum from Lehigh. What did Lehigh do? They beat Duke in 2012 mm -hmm. down in Greensboro in the first round and CJ McCollum was a large part of that. Yes, he was their best player. I looked up CJ McCollum's background. I cannot find any tie to the army. I, I if thought I, there might have been, if but I, I missed it. I missed it. I looked at Wikipedia. Yeah. I did a news search. I looked for like my usual, admittedly, surface level. I've got 15 minutes to try to figure something out. I usually know where to go. I cannot find any sort of connection to army. Is Lehigh? No, it's just a research institution up in Pennsylvania. Okay, cool. So, why are these two connected? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Is the person who puts the commercial together not a Duke fan and this was their way? Are they really a Carolina fan and they thought, I know what I can do to get over on Duke? Yeah, they sold those Lehigh, Mercer, like, VCU like, shirts like, okay, for a okay. while. It's like, okay, got it. I can't put Caleb Love in this commercial. Got it. But I know what I can do. I bet I can get CJ McCollum pretty cheap. Get him in the commercial. I don't get it, man. I, it's so strange. Because if, if you're one of the people out there who doesn't know, Mike Krzyzewski was a captain in the Army, graduate from West Point, yes. played basketball there, coached there, played for Bobby Knight. You know, hence the nickname the general. Right. Right. Like I, I don't I was, I was so confused. But 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 oh uh, no, there's more. But here's the thing <laughs> about this. Here's the thing about this. You know, you've been on this kick lately about like Hall of Fame coaches apparently never lose in the NCAA tournament. Right. There's prime example number. Yeah. One. Oh, Coach yeah. K. Well, Coach K would never. Oh no, Coach K did several times. It was a thing there for a bit where they had to figure things out. But they have they evolved and they learned and that kind of stuff. So you know, I'm watching this game and I'm thinking about Coach K. The Coach K against Mercer, the Coach K against Lehigh, the Coach K 
when they got their ass handed to them by Arizona in the Sweet 16, was it? Oh, uh, yeah. With uh, uh with Kyrie. Was, no, no, no. It was yeah, it was DeAndre Ayton, who I think was it? No. No. no, no. Am I am I am I confusing my years? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm confusing my years. What my point is, there's a lot of these. I mean, it was, I witnessed, it was 11 because uh that's I mean, I, when Sean Miller was that's right. Debbie's number one choice. And I saw there's another Debbie choice, right? <laughs> And then, of course, oh, I'm, we talked about VCU and Shaka Smart. I mean, I was up at Buffalo watching VCU take seven, it. Seven, I think. Take, I think it was 06. Take it to, take it to Duke, okay? No, six was their JJ. Oh, year. that's right. It was 07. But as I was looking up commercials, you brought up the general. Oh, no. Coach K with a the guitar. There's Rick, this is a cursed commercial. Rick Patino. There's Roy in pajamas. And then there's Bobby Knight. Just stay. What are you doing? We're playing the Guitar Hero. Now there's Guitar Hero Metallica. So? That means you're going to have to put on some pants, Pops. Who are you calling Pops? <laughs> Metallica and 21... <laughs> Matt Pinfield narrating the commercial, you, for heaven's sake. You need to play the CJ McCollum clip that and I then, sent you. I got to find it. I got to find it. Uh, and then, oh, here's, here's you know, from 20-some-odd years ago. Hi, uh, any of you guys going to March Madness? He is. Then I'm Mr. Krzyzewski. Coach Krzyzewski? Yes, I am. Yeah. I drive a doctor who looks just like him. So cool. This is great. Keep going. Hey, Billy Packer. Hey, do you do you have Prince Albert in a can? Hi, uh, Grand Hill, please. Tell him this is his coach. Is this Jason Kidd? Jason, baby. Hey, forget about the pros. Why don't you transfer over to Duke? Hi. Yeah, uh, I'm calling for Big Dog. Uh, I'd like to leave a 5 a.m. No, 4 a.m. wake up call. Yeah, no, it, it, it's okay. First time in a limo, coach. First time without my good pal, Bobby Knight. Think you're going to the Final Four this year, coach? Hey, aren't you Coach Krzyzewski? You mean Krzyzewski? Yes, I am. <laughs> so that was... What was that an ad for? So it was a Budweiser commercial. Uh, Okay. Where he was Mr. Galley Weekets. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I am. And then, of course, he gets in the limo and things like that. So it was such a classic. This doesn't happen anymore, but like the Bud Light commercial was so popular, it became a meme before we knew what memes were. So CBS did a a, a little intro to their coverage. Like, remember? Oh, kind of like the Chuck Amato Sopranos. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. They, they did an intro for that, and that included Mike. Mike Shevsky's been in a lot of commercials, man. Yeah. He's been in a he's lot got his of commercials. stuff now. He Don does. Stanley. He does. He does. So you had mentioned, uh, you had mentioned the CJ McCollum thing and, um, and, you know, what he had to say about Mike Krzyzewski or Duke and stuff like that. So you had found this old clip. I was going to say, I, I don't know what order this is in. but Yeah, this is, from two, this is from two weeks ago okay. on the CBS Sports website or on the CBS Sports Instagram. So here's CJ McCollum uh, talking about the time they stuck it to Duke. In the uh, Selection Sunday show, I was geeked. I was, I was super hyped because, one, I hate Duke. I hate everything about him. I've always been a North Carolina fan, but I hate everything about him. And I felt like that was my chance to kind of solidify who I thought I was. Like, I always thought I was the man, but the rest of the world hadn't seen me yet. In warm-ups, they was talking crazy, like just saying ridiculous, reckless stuff, trying to like punk us in warm-ups. And I'm like, y'all ain't even built like that. But then like once the game started, like I let them know I was here talking to the bench. I'm talking to Coach K after shots. Like I'm letting them know I'm here. I don't know who y'all, what y'all been doing in the ACC, but ain't none of these, ain't none of these like me. When we drew Duke in the... Uh, <laughs> All that ties back together. How did he end up in that commercial? <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I get it. If you're a listener to this podcast and you're in this industry and you know how that commercial came about, please contact us. The OG goes digital at gmail.com. Please contact me. We need answers to this. Housekeeping. Big thanks to Edovana for sponsoring housekeeping. Check them out. E N O V A N A dot com. Or as our friend Bud made for us the jingle. If you have mess inside your mansion or trash in your cabana, get it clean, clean with Emobana. 
Perfection. Perfection. Finally, Joe, after all these years, I've delivered you a jingle, sir. I've been asking for a jingle for <laughs> 10, 15 years. It's not a barbershop quartet. You know, but I've delivered you a jingle. They came out to the house uh, yesterday. I don't even know what day is it anymore, but they came out to the house yesterday, did a great job as always. Uh, I always know that Inovana has been to the house because they actually can clean up my own bathroom mess. I'm like, ah, my deodorant was put away where it's supposed to be. Ah, look at that. Toothpaste, the cap on the toothpaste. Everything is back where it needs to be. That is attention to detail, folks. And if you don't believe me, go to their website, Inovana.com. Seriously, you, you, know, you can tell a lot about a business just by going to their website. Big thanks to Two Roosters for sponsoring us. Check them out, Two Roosters. I just, just got a text from Jared. Oh, what you were saying. What, what, Let's uh, see. what did Jared say? We got an update on gallons of Tuffy I, Tracks. I hope so. I want to start gambling on that. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. What? Oh, no. Are they out of Tuffy Tracks? You got to be kidding me. What's going on? No. What? I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll, what? What? Do you want me to set the line or do you want to guess where the gallons are? Set the line. Because the last time we were at 250. Set the line. I mean, real time gambling here. Fine. I, I, I'll set it at 649, 649 and a half over. I'll do the half over. 649 and a half. Go over. We are getting, this is from Jared from Two Roosters, two roosters.com. We're getting carpal tunnel over here, cutting this cookie <laughs> dough. We're up to 750 <laughs> gallons of Tuffy Tracks. 750 gallons. So yeah, Wolfpack's good for CBS. Wolfpack's good for our YouTube you. numbers. <laughs> Wolfpack, I told you, is kicking all kinds of butt for two roosters. Check them out at the arena. Check them out at the OG home base, mm -hmm. Lake Boone. Check them out right here off a of person. I mean, this is, publication. this is what Plus Gov the arena. This is what Governor Roy Cooper needed to understand. You want to save the local economy? NC State basketball has to there be good. There you go. That's straight that's up. It. Big thanks to Hometown Realty. Maybe maybe NC State's going to affect the housing market. I have no idea. We'll see what happens. Uh, myhtr.com. Again, that's myhtr.com. Buy, sell, calculate. Let the experts handle this stuff. You don't want to be selling a house in this kind of market. You want to maximize what you're going to get for your home. You also want to get the inside track on buying a home. And myhtr.com is the place to go. Joining us on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline <clears throat> from Charlotte, he is contemplating life, contemplating the Carolina Panthers. He is Kyle Bailey, WFNZ. Uh, as Julio joked, when, when you just popped on, you look like Captain America. You sit down and you go, so you want to talk about the Carolina Panthers? <laughs> That's where we're at. No, I'm sorry. It, it rained overnight here in Lake Norman, and uh, I just walked out to talk to you guys without any thought of the fact that I have nowhere dry to sit, so I'm awkwardly standing here like a statue. But uh, no, it's good to be back, gentlemen. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's awkward to talk about the Carolina Panthers right now because I think Panthers fans and Panthers media, we've been burned by two coaching searches, uh, burned by the talking points from the organization, only for them to fail. And I think we're trying to be cautious about how we talk about this offseason, cautious how we talk about Dave Canales, talk, cautious about Dan Morgan and the offseason moves. Is that the sense that you get when you're talking to the people in Charlotte when it, when it comes to the Panthers offseason? Yeah, I think they're, they're pretty careful about messaging. I think the only guy who probably doesn't care as much about that, well, I don't know if that's true. I was going to say Dave Canales. I don't think he worries about what people think of him and his football team, but you know, he's out there on social media. I do think uh, a certain kind of messaging is important to him. But no, I think your point's a good one that, um, you know, they're being very careful not to get too carried away with the big announcements and the excitement and everything else because last year was so bad. But, um, you know, you notice that in the national media too. A lot of the same people who were touting them as a dark horse a year ago are now absolutely um, crapping all over the organization on TV every day. And, you know, again, not, not unexpected. It's just, you know, a, a funny contrast from last year to this year. So I, I think that way, I mean, the, the phrase I keep repeating on the air is that I am stoic and skeptical until I see some wins. Um, and I don't, I think everybody should be that way, but I, I will say, and I'm sure we'll get into this. Uh, I, I like some of what they've done and I, mm -hmm. I don't think it's wrong to say that. So, I mean, Stavion Clowney, that's the number one overall pick. That continues their trend of getting number one picks, right? Like, yeah. But on what arc of his career? Hey, at that's least he's not question. a quarterback. Okay. At least they didn't get a top. The guy who was taken in the top three as a quarterback. So fair progress. Okay. Uh, progress. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's one way to approach it. I mean, 
you know, I, I, I like that he's back. I thought that uh, I thought they really needed him. Uh, once they got to a certain point in that second wave of free agency where it's like, okay, you got DJ Wanham. If that's your plan for your number two edge rusher, not bad at all, you know, but you, you better find somebody else. And Chase Young ends up in New Orleans and, you know, he's a, he's got a neck issue, which, I mean, they might have dodged a bullet there. But, you know, at that point, it kind of felt like Jadavion Clowney or bust or hope that somebody cuts a good player in camp. Um, but, you know, Jadavion, he's coming off a career year in sacks. Uh, I think PFF had him as the 19th graded, 19th best graded edge in the NFL, in the NFL. I mean, you're getting a guy who's motivated to come home. And so I, I think it's a good deal all around. I don't know if they'll get spectacular Jadavion Clowney or if they'll get Cleveland Jadavion Clowney. I have no idea. But, you know, if, if they get Baltimore Jadavion Clowney, they'll be pretty happy with the deal they made. It's not good for sports talk radio. And it's really not good, you know, if you're actually trying to put the team back together in a splash. But my goodness, the Carolina Panthers have Bill Belichick's wet dream here. They have the 33rd pick and the 39th pick. Oh, yeah. And the 65th pick. Like, Bill Belichick wakes him up in the, himself in the morning to those three picks. Are you kidding me? <laughs> my question is, will it be Dan Morgan's <laughs> fantasy to have those three assets? God, I wish I could say wet dream on the radio every day. Somebody, I mean, the number of phone calls I'd get if I said wet dream on the radio every day. I mean, you two know that life. So I, I know you appreciate it even more than ever. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> what was the question again? I lost you. <laughs> you lost I, know, I know it would be Bill Belichick <laughs> fantasy to have those three. Yeah. Picks. How do we yeah. think Dan looking for, Morgan? Looking for football dudes. Yeah. That's where you find the yeah, dudes, That's where you find Joe. the real value. But yes. how do you suspect Dan Morgan treats these three things? Because it does feel like. I, I mean, you know, Belichick would trade out of 33. I mean, oh, yeah. you, know, you know that for mm -hmm. sure. Oh, yeah. But uh, just how do you think they use those three assets? Because they have so many different needs. Yeah, I mean, I know Joe Person talked about it earlier this week that he thinks Dan would be more inclined to trade down. I, I, the thing is, if you want to weaponize this offense and you're in love with somebody there at 33, man, you better know you could get him, you know, th those several picks later. Because you can get an impact player, a game changer, right away at 33. So I personally kind of like the idea of picking where they, they are. I won't be upset if they trade back and it feels like they pulled off some magic. But the one thing I know they're not doing is going up. And, and I know Eric Edholm wrote about that earlier this week. And, you know, the possibility of going up to 29 to go get a wide receiver. I think it was Xavier Worthy out of Texas. But mm -hmm. um, I, don't th I think that's entirely unnecessary. And I think you're right. Belichick would do it. I'm not sure Dan Morgan will, but I know he's thinking about it because – you know, they've they brought in some talent, but they still need to lay – they they need a, a better foundation. That has to be done through the draft. Yeah, and that's the thing that I would look at and why I would look back. Yes, you can get somebody of value with that 33rd pick. I'm not disputing that. However, the Panthers – and I think – And same it, with 65, Joe. Like, don't undersell 65. Agree, that, agree. that third pick is important. Which gets to the larger point, and I think this is one thing the Panthers might, without explicitly saying it, are in action doing. We're not trying to make this thing – we're not trying to go halvesies on this. Like, oh, we're trying to rebuild, but we're trying to win now. We're trying to do this, but we're also trying to do this. I get the sense that this is a true makeover while trying to build around what they have to be invested in and make work while his rookie contract is still, you know, workable for the salary cap that is built around Bryce on the best they can. So if I'm the Panthers, I try to get as many picks as I can and hope that one of these things sticks around. That, that's where I'm at with the Panthers. At least it's an admission through their action that, yeah, we got to clean the slate a little bit. We got to move on from stuff that just wasn't working out, even though we tried really, really badly to make it work. Yeah, the the thing is, I think you have to you have to be prepared to do that deal. It's probably going to be a night two on Friday night type of thing that you're doing there because you have to watch how the board falls. I mean, we all know that on the draft every single year that matters. But you know, you have yeah, it's a wide receiver deep class. But all of a sudden, Kansas City went from needing one to possibly needing two. Yeah, and, and they're picking a couple of spots ahead of you. So you know, if you think you can get a dude at 33, and you're afraid that Kansas City might go, you know, just as an example, Mike, you might not be as inclined to trade back. So I, I don't know. I mean, it just depends on who you're in love with. And I, I don't even know that that's the right thing. But, um, you know, if a team gets convicted on a player and, and a GM gets convicted on a player, good luck moving him off of that. Kyle, I love it when people tell me I'm right. You're right. Kansas City. God, where would they be right now if they just had Tariq Hill? You, you're if right. they had just held <laughs> on, you know? I mean, think of the imaginary <laughs> Super Bowl they won, right? <laughs> they won two Super Bowls. But think, yes, true. But think <laughs> 
They could have won the Super Bowl by like 40 points. Yeah. Maybe yeah. More. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, what a mistake. Why would they get rid of that guy? Crazy. <laughs> they're, still, they're still dealing with the repercussions I mean, of moving on from Tyreek Hill. I mean, the butterfly effect. You're, effect. you're right. Ian McNeil yeah. missing a free throws and Tyreek Hill ended up in Miami. It's, it's just the same thing. I, I wanted to go back to something you said, Kyle, about how the national media is talking about the Carolina Panthers. And I think everybody needs, every sport needs a punching bag. And Dan Snyder is no longer around to be that easy punching bag. And I feel like David Tepper has assumed that role for just his own actions, like tossing the drink and whatnot. Uh, the, you know, their, their inability to get the coach right, uh, their inability to potentially get the quarterback right. Uh, it's got to the point where Pat McAfee is even making a bit while they were at the owners meeting. Like, oh, you know, I don't think David Tepper likes me. Of course, that has something to do with Frank Reich, his connections to Indianapolis and everything else. The question that I have is, is Tepper, did Tepper learn any lessons from last year? Will he keep a low profile? Will he not take the bait of having his team and himself dunked on throughout the season? I don't think we'll know that until or unless they start winning. Mm -hmm. Because his temptation will be to once they start winning, assuming that happens, you know, to, to jump out and be a part of it again. Um, as you, you've noticed the pattern, the trend over the past couple of years that, you know, when they've seemingly done good things, he jumps in front of the camera, right, <laughs> at, at any any opportunity to talk about it. Um, you know, after the Bryce Young thing, the whole we've got a point guard, we can we can save money on wide receivers. So I'm sure Joe loved that. Um, you know, but that was. You know, it was it was funny, but it also kind of punctuated what had we thought had become a trend of him. Okay, when they've seemingly done something good, he wants the camera. Yeah. When they when they don't, he doesn't. So I don't know. Um, I think if they start to flash, they win some games early. Maybe we hear from him. Maybe we don't. I think he's learning. I mean, I mean, we've talked about the number of owners in the NFL that you know it didn't start to click for them until years five, six, or seven, and you know, learning the league, learning who they could trust, you know, and and all those sorts of things. So. Um, I don't know, Joe. I, we've, we've talked about this quite a bit on my show, like just watching the last couple of weeks unfold. Is this Tep letting football guys do football things and getting out of the way? Um, is he still behind the scenes and, and calling some shots? And, you know, he'll reemerge sometime in the not too distant future. Don't know. But uh, I, I hope it's the fact that he's learning because that might mean some brighter days. ahead. Maybe, maybe. And this is the part that it, it pains me not to be in that market from time to time because I feel like I could get a better sense of what's going on in that building, which is why I text you, why I listen to your show when I'm when I'm going on my dumb mental health walks and whatnot. Yeah, I love your text. Your text brighten my day in the afternoon. Yes, I yeah, I, I'll give you a live. I was going to say all of my radio friends love it when I text them in the middle of the show with like. Uh, <laughs> No, but anyway, the you waited all those years for that, sir. I did. You heard it. I did. I have heard it this time. I get to air check other shows now. I'm very excited about that. Maybe I should. I, be I, I, I get a thrill out of it too. I feel bad though. I'll text West Durham during a game, and I'm like, you know, he probably—I don't know if he hates this or he loves this right now, but he's oh, getting it anyway. Wes will text in the middle of a commercial break. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's a professional. He's a total professional. Uh, no, what I'm getting at is, is that I feel like somebody has to be in that building in a meeting or, or or around the phone to make sure that they go n n no that messaging no longer works right like right. when the when the gambling rollout happened and there was i think the NFL network or who was it it was up in Adams K Adams was there at Bank of America Stadium and they were talking to Nicole Tepper i understand why they were talking to Nicole Tepper because it was from the business perspective of what's going on with the Carolina Panthers but they keep going to the look at all the concerts we've brought here and MLS like no, nobody gives a shit about that. They want a winning football team. Even yeah. Luke Combs, even Luke Combs, who you brought to that building and you sold out, hates the fact that you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing as an owner, and that is putting a winning football product out on the football field. And I feel like sometimes either he doesn't have anybody around him to do that, or they've gotten rid of all the people who could have done that. It's one or the other. Yeah, I, you know, the, the the Up and Adams appearance I thought was funny um, because as soon as she said that in that interview about the 40 ticketed events, people started crushing her online. And, of course. You know, I, I understood it. I mean, we all understood it, but I was just laughing. I'm going on to the air chuckling about it. And I was like, what did you expect them to do? They don't have any football accomplishments to tout. You know, so unless she's going to brag about giving away backpacks to kids in the city, which is a great thing, but great thing. You know, I, I don't know what else she's pivoting to to answer the question. So, you know, as far as that stuff, I mean, listen. He's not well-liked. She's not well-liked right now. 
And it's because of what you just said, the perception that they care more about opening up new revenue streams than they do about winning football games, even yeah. though that's their, their biggest and most important asset to the city. I would challenge that. I think it matters to him greatly to win football games. Now, everybody's got their own motivations for things. Diehard Panthers fans who've been here since the beginning, they just love the team. They want a title. They want Panther wins on Sunday. Um, you know, winning is obviously going to pad his bottom line. I mean, he's going to make a lot more money if they win than if they lose. And he's still making a lot of money as is, so he's fine. But, um, you know, it's not trending well for him, and it hasn't been for some time. The best thing he can do is to step back and hope that the guys that he's empowered here can get them back to respectability so that people will at the very least leave him alone and possibly in the not too distant future, you know, start to change the perception of himself around here. But, you know, you've got a stadium conversation coming up. I'm sure you just saw what happened in Kansas City yesterday. So yep. that, that'll make things interesting. And, um, you know, there's the lingering bitterness from Rock Hill and, you know, all sorts of things. I mean, I, I will say Charlotte FC has been a smash hit success here in Charlotte uh, in every conceivable way. And I do think they've built some goodwill there. But Back to your original point, man, people just care far more about the Carolina Panthers. And until that's fixed, he's not going to get full credit for anything. They have a classic success story in the soccer because of the failures of the Panthers. Yes. We've seen this here in this market for forever. Our former employer tried to make college baseball a thing. And it became a thing when the Carolina Hurricanes weren't in the playoffs and weren't relevant. And now that the Hurricanes are relevant, it's like, who talks about college baseball? Nobody talks I, about college I still baseball. talk about it from time to time. Oh, I'm not saying there's I not fans. Care about it. I'm just saying there's not fans, right? but you know what's occupying but, everybody's mind? Yeah, right now. The Canes. It, well, no, right now it's it's, well, it's freaking the, it's the wolf basketball, pack. right? Yes. Yes. And that's right. why I'm a little bit worried about the Canes, but I think the Canes are going to be fine. Yeah, the Canes will be fine. And what they've done. But I laugh. Like, don't ever forget, we have Carolina Cobras paraphernalia in here. That first year when the Canes were not good and not in the playoffs, they sold out that building. Yeah. So that's what the 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 soccer team is getting the bounce from. Oh, the Panthers stink, but I still want to go to the stadium to, and do to, things. To to to, right? to your point, and and we'll wrap the conversation on this with Cal Bailey, WFNZ. But like, let's not to give this point. guy credit. We're like, oh, what a soccer team. To, to your point about the soccer thing, how people are just desperate for something to be positive about. Hey, remember when the Hornets had a moment, Kyle? <laughs> Listen, man. I do 82 Hornets pregame shows a year. I remember all of the moments. <laughs> remember, oh, yeah. remember Post no, you, Do you really? Yeah, he does all the oh, yeah. 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 You, sir. Yeah. It's it's brutal. It's brutal for Kyle. But 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 after the trade deadline, they had like that dead cat bounce. And people were like, look at the Hornets go. People were hype about they it. They went 500 in a few yes. games. <laughs> and well, I mean, oh, now they're whatever. O opening night, they beat the Hawks, Lamelo, and, you know, and Mark Williams, Brandon. I mean, everybody looks fantastic. We're going back to the playoffs. We look up in a couple of months, and they've won 18 games. It's just been, <laughs> it's, it's been, it's been a ride, boys. I'll tell you what. But no, I, mean, I, I will push back a little bit, uh, Gilio, because there is they they did their market research, and I and I wasn't skeptical per se, but some of the projections for numbers that I saw years ago, I thought were a little bit lofty. Um, and they've surpassed every metric and every single match for the last couple of years. That's not going away. Okay. Um, I, it's, it's, it's almost its own standalone entity at this point. And, and I, you know, it's both Tepper Sports and Entertainment, but um, there's, of course, a massive Hispanic community here in Charlotte that has, has really attached itself to that product right away. Uh, they love it, and the, the atmosphere is incredible. So I will say, look, again, the Panthers are the most important asset. They're the most important thing they do, but – Man, Charlotte FC has been incredible in every conceivable way. So I got to give them a lot of credit. Cal Bailey, WFNZ, out in Charlotte. We appreciate the time. Uh, enjoy the rest of your soggy morning, your moment of sanity <laughs> before you go back to being a dad. Hey, look, man, I've already had a moment today where I had to, you know, drop ship a trombone in record time, breaking several traffic laws. So I, I totally understand it. So it's just one of those mornings, man. I look forward to those days. I mean, I, know I, they, I don't wish away time in any, in it, by any stretch of the imagination, but. Uh, I look forward to being able to have conversations as opposed to explaining to a 19-month-old why he shouldn't scream in his infant <laughs> sister's face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cal. I'll talk to you later, man. All right, fellas. Be good. Big thanks to DraftKings for sponsoring Ovius and Julio. Use that promo code OG24 to get some bonus bets. I will give you the legalese in just a little bit. It's my favorite time of the year where the you still have these basketball games. I don't know squat about squat, but 
but it is a hell of a lot of fun to put five dollars down on like a six leg parlay and just see where things go. That's how I utilize DraftKings. Um, I have made some serious bets, some futures bets, right? For like the Carolina Hurricanes. As we're getting ready, we're going to talk to Mike Maniscalco here in a little bit. Um, I think they're going to win their, I think they're going to get to the Stanley Cup. So I put futures bets on the various rounds of the Carolina Hurricanes playoff runs. I don't know what the odds are right now. I got them a while back when everything went live and the odds were actually still pretty good. So you can do the same thing as well. Just use that promo code OG24. What do you have on deck, Joe? Uh, I have a play of the day in baseball today okay. since my NIT, like 7-0 and now in the NIT. Look at you. Are, I mean, like, are we being serious? Like, what you, on man. earth is happening? Can we have more NIT games somehow? Yes. Please? Yes, absolutely. Uh, no, but let's go baseball. The Pirates are 5-0 and this year. All of those games have been on the road. But before you get too excited about how good the Pirates are, the, the games have been against the Marlins and now the Nationals. The Nationals, conversely, are 1-3 on this season. But if you look... Joe, mm-hmm. of those four losses, two of them have been by one run. So you can actually get decent value on the Nationals plus one and a half tonight. Meaning if they lose, you can still win as long as they lose by one run. So minus 125 for the Nats plus one and a half at home. Just, I mean, let's 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 roll the dice a little bit here. I love it. I absolutely love it. Again, use that promo code. OG24 with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of NASCAR, live in North Carolina. Download that DraftKings app, use the promo code OG24, bet $5, and you get $200 instantly in bonus bets, only on the DraftKings Sportsbook with code OG24. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook slash NC. NASCAR is not a sponsor of this promotion and used under license. Again, use that promo code OG24. Big thanks to Whitaker and Hamer for sponsoring Obias and Gilio. Check them out, wh.lawyer. Uh, Whitaker and Hamer is also going to help us out with our OG birthday bash, which will be May 3rd at Shady's in downtown Garner. Uh, we're going to have our guy, OG Scoreboard. Jason's going to do some trivia for us. We're going to have some raffles, some bourbon. Uh, we got a, D, a DJ Jarvi mixtape that we're going to give away. I'm sure we'll have some other stuff, but just kind of keep that in mind. May 3rd, Shady's that Friday night. We're going to make it like a low-key hang, celebrate one year of this podcast. And again, all your support for this podcast. And big thanks to Whitaker and Hamer from being there for being there from the jump. Also, big thanks to Matt Davis at State Farm. Check them out online at insuregarner.com, the OG insurance.com, or call them directly at 919-779-8277. Save you money on home and auto. That is key. We love saving you money on this program. And that is one thing that Matt Davis can do. So again, check them out insuregarner.com on Saturday night ahead of the final four I will be at Longleaf Swine I'm going to do a little pregame while I'm out there uh, we be, we were there for the start of the NCAA tournament uh, we had a fun live show out there everybody had a great time I feel like I got to keep these things kind of going so I'll do my pickle shot I'll do my Evan Williams Ooh. whiskey with the pickle juice get the burger Settle in for the first half of that basketball game. Should be a lot of fun. Not the chicken pot pie. No. I'm okay. going to stick with my burger. So The brisket metal is good too. But if you're looking, if you're going to be watching the game at home, you want to get some takeout, you're having a bunch of people over, longleafswine.com. You can go order online and bring that stuff home and get ready to watch some basketball. You will not be at Longleaf Swine with me. You're going to be in Phoenix. We'll Correct. talk about that more a little bit later. Yeah, depending on the day. Yeah. Saturday, yes. <laughs> Thursday, no. I'll be no, in you'll Vegas. Be, you'll be in travel. Mode. I'll be in in, in route. Be, I'm going to see if you can join us via Southwest Wi-Fi. That would be kind of wild on the OG Live. Yeah, I might no. need to get actual headphones. I, I know, I know, I know. <sighs> anyway, go to longleafswine.com. Look who's in studio. Hi. It's Mike Maniscalco. This is spacious. 
<laughs> Not gonna lie, it's bigger than I uh, I thought the studio would be. <clears throat> look for you too. Look, you ready to go? Re it's you ready for some radio therapy? Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the time <laughs> that you and Mark Thomas were squeezed into a glass case of emotion oh, yeah. at the no. old Tobacco Road. Oh yeah. Now the Amras. Yeah. Amra ha Amra still has the glass because that thing's like indestructible. It's oh, the yeah. heaviest thing in the world. But they built you a little studio space. Oh yeah, that was yeah. And that they was part of it. And they shoved the two largest men in radio into that space and to do to do stuff. Oh yeah. It was it was great. We were literally trapped in the glass case of emotion. It was and, so uh, hot in there. Man in the and, box. Oh yeah, that was the other thing. They didn't <laughs> figure out that they needed to put air conditioning into it. Get back in the box. So so I go I go to the box two minutes, feel shame. <laughs> And get free. It had like one little vent. Oh, and yeah. you have all this radio equipment running oh, hot. It was, it was so we finally got to the point where we just kept the radio equipment in there and we you would yeah, kind of yeah, I remember we'd do it. Shimmy our way outside. That's why I'm saying this is spacious. I was kind of envisioning <laughs> that. No, Alex no, no. gave you the glass. Nah, nah, nah. We make it uh, we make it work here. You also were fascinated by Julio's draft day mug. Oh, I know. Well, it's not I, no, look, the, I'm, mug, I'm, the mug is great. I just I have gotten into uh, first off, here's one for you, Ovius. Is I, I do vow for us to do one sports talk segment uh, while I'm on with you for our just throwing streak, throwing, baby. throwing yeah. the electro shock therapy for us on yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. What's the best sports movie of all time? <laughs> God, oh. well, can we, you know can we wait till even, June? Not, to do in, that? not in the conversation. On, if if there was a top 100. And there were only 98 <laughs> sports movies ever made. I've never That's seen not it. getting on the list. I've never seen that movie. And I like Kevin Costner. And okay. I like Dennis Leary. Yeah. But that and movie, Jonah. no. Oh, that's right. Jonah. Jonah. Oh, my God. No. It's such Beep, a huge Beep. no. Jonah from Veep. Oh, he's like in that movie? Yes. To the assistant principal. Oh, that's funny. All right. Oh, it's, oh, it's so bad. All right. Well, maybe when the Canes are done winning the Stanley Cup and we get done with the parades yeah. and the after, par good. after parties and stuff like that, um, when you invite me to your day with the Cup. Sure. Um, we can do a, a worst sports movies draft. Worst. In. Worst sports movies In. draft. Now, it's funny. We're talking about hot streaks and everything's all about NC State right now because of the Final Four oh, trip. Yeah. But shh, 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 shh. Hurricane's still cooking. Yeah. Still doing their thing. Yep. Don Waddell kind of liked his group before the draft, or before the trade deadline. Now he really likes this group. And they added a guy. Before we talk about what the Kings have been doing as of late, my Twitter timeline was blowing up. People yeah. freaking out over Scott Morrow. Who yeah. is Scott Morrow? Why are people hyped about this? Uh, you should be hyped about this this young man because he is one of the elite defensive prospects in college hockey. And a, a few years ago, he steps into the same place where Kel McCarr plays and breaks Kel McCarr's records mm -hmm. as a as a freshman. So uh, the team, however, for Scott wasn't that good uh, the last few seasons. Okay, uh, but they did make it into the uh, their version of the NCAA tournament for hockey. They're not going to get to the Frozen Four, but uh, they get eliminated, and so now he's available to come and play. And, look, his offensive upside is great. Uh, this is a guy who I think if this was a decade ago, mm -hmm. you'd probably see him in a Canes uniform for sure next year. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that this could be a guy who maybe could benefit from a year in the AHL, but – it's there as far as the mindset, the physical ability, and the offensive upside on the blue line that he can provide. So you should be excited about this guy because he's, again, one of these players who he's not that far away from being able to step in and play. I don't care if he plays or not. You know why? The symbolism, sir. Jack Johnson didn't want to come. Oh, <laughs> didn't want to play. Stop. Complete, completely different. Adam totally Fox different didn't want to come. Yeah, didn't want to play. Yeah, this could be. And now the Canes have convinced one of these college guys. Oh, you you want to be a part of it? You want to put your name on the freaking cup? Yeah, come on down. Oh no, I mean that's let's go. Joe Gillio is not wrong with that that assessment. And the other thing too is players look at depth charts now. Mm -hmm. It's not just that they look at all right. Where's my playing time? Coming from like, are there nil if, deals too? They got to be considering. <laughs> no, anyway, but no, college hockey actually does it right. No, I know they do. <laughs> but if I do sign, you know what's in front of me, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, look, the, if we want to live in the now, and we should, with how good this Canes team is, um, 
you look at that blue line and you're like, how is anybody going to crack it? They're looking, but they're looking two, three years down the line. They're looking at this. No, they're looking, they're at, looking at next at this year, year when they where there's a bunch the of UFAs. Who, but are they going to be like, I don't is know. somebody like I, Morrow I, is, was it Nikishan? Is that, is that the pairing that is going to be ready for next year though? The Nikishan one, I, I, don't want to comment on because there is so many things going on besides just a simple fair contract. Fair, I mean, fair, he's fair, playing fair. in the KHL and they have put out their edict of, you know, you're going to be 25 years old. You're going to, you're going to fulfill your deal to the last possible second over there. Right. And I do not want to get into any of that and say, Oh yeah, because who knows that could turn on a dime. Sure. I, I mean, somehow I want to now hear the story how the Philadelphia Flyers got their six foot eight net minder <laughs> across where it looked like that was not going to happen. I mean, there was a big story with him last year that yeah. they yanked him out of, you know, Sweden, right? Because they had to play. But yeah. on, on these, on these fronts, what we've seen with the Canes organization is they're not afraid to go into unrestricted free agency with players that they have under contract mm -hmm. and they'll sort it out come July 1st. Okay. So, but what Scott Morrow is looking at is, okay, well, if things go this way, I am much closer to the NHL than if I go someplace else. And I think for certain players, you can only do so much in college when you are an elite player. Now Like you can, you want to win a national championship. It's why all the Michigan guys went back yeah. uh, for college hockey. And there's so many loopholes that need to be tied off. In, in hockey with how you can bring players over, but you should be excited about this guy because, and I think part of it too is where Joe is right. I think a few years ago, you'd have somebody going, now nah, I'm going to play this out and, and see where I can then go anywhere. And now it's like, all right, you want me? Let's get a contract done. I can't wait. This is my best bird man meme. Mm -hmm. That's his name, right? The bird yeah, man. the bird man, right? How, how many months ago, how many weeks ago did we talk to Rod Brandemore? And I told him, ah, who's on a different Playing right now, yeah, he's got he's showing us a different gear right now. It was the this end. Of, is, it was the end of February. This is the best version of Aho we've seen. Mm -hmm. And and Rod with his best poker face, eh, he gave me the got man. He gave me the I don't know about all that. Aho has been ridiculous. Come on, this is the best we've seen him play. It's, it's funny because um, I was on the way over. He was doing an interview that I was listening to. Mm -hmm. uh, so shout out to. Word stellic, stellectricity for those of you who grew up near <laughs> Toronto and uh, Scotty Lachlan on NHL radio. And Sebastian said, I don't know. I still think I have more to give. That's like, it's every, true. That, it's true. And that's but, every hockey player. They always think, that. but he is also, I think gotten to the point of not that the game is easy for him, but he is to a point now where he knows what he needs to do mm -hmm. to produce the way that he produces. And, I think you also have to take a look at who does he play alongside. Uh, and right now, this this line of Jake Gensel with Seth Jarvis being centered by Sebastian Ajo. Yes, yes. Point to that calendar. Of the month, man. Puppy time. As well, you should. But I think that's part of it. But what Sebastian Ajo is doing now, and this is the thing where I, where you're right, I think this is the best version of him that we're seeing. He's making his line mates better. Instead of you say, oh, it's... Got to have you know, Turbo over there. Yeah, he's all, well, he, you know, if you, you got to get him going, he needs Tavo Teravine. Now it's like, you need to get somebody going. Maybe we're with Sebastian Ajo. That's, I almost sound like a broken record here when we talk about uh, the lines and whatnot. I'm glad you brought up the Turbo thing. I always felt that was more him needing to step up. Not not Ajo, not getting other people mm -hmm. going, that kind of stuff. If you put, Ajo, Ajo's best attribute is setting things up, making plays. If you put him with the proper playmakers, guys who can finish, I was always been curious, okay, what ultimately is yep. going to be set up? I never really viewed somebody like Tara Vine in this. As, I'm not saying that Tara Vine is no. not a bad player. It's just that's not what he is. Gensel is that. Well, the, the thing is, Tara Vine is the setup man. Yeah. And, you know, he's not looking to shoot. Yeah. And, and that kind of becomes, for lack of any better term here, a security blanket. Mm -hmm. Well, I know he's going to do this, and we mm -hmm. played together, so you go from there. The thing for me with Jake Ensel that is just popped off the the ice, how good of a passer he is. Mm -hmm. My God. I mean, it's right where it needs to be. Him and, and Evgeny Kuznetsov. Evgeny Kuznetsov throws no-look passes that are flat, and they're right where they need to be. I'm like, he, all right, you get away with that once, twice. He'll do it two, three times in a game. He'll be looking at you, Joe, and there's no way he can see what's going on over here. Mm -hmm. Yet he just dishes, and it's right where it needs to be. Um, but I think for Sebastian Ajo, again, I, I can give you all the stories. He's the most competitive guy on the team. It doesn't matter what they're playing. 
uh, what they're doing when it oh, comes to oh, calls. We, familiar. Oh, we know. Familiar. Oh, I know. I know you guys know. Next, <laughs> next, week, next week, we're dropping uh, the latest in the Joe Giglio gets beat by Sebastian Ajo in something that is not hockey. Mini golf? It's a, uh, it's a, it's a Swedish table game. No, not uh, Dutch. It's Dutch. Dutch. I'm sorry. It's a Dutch shuffleboard. You were there for the Dutch shuffleboard, weren't you? I was. I, you were playing it. I was yeah. not there for the end result. Oh, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It actually provided one of the great lines from Aho. <laughs> who I don't think people understand how sneaky funny he oh, is. Oh, un, <laughs> unbelievable is. sense of humor. Uh, like yeah, dry, a, quick wit. Very dry, quick. And it's funny. Joe's like, well, it's this, it's this Dutch shuffleboard game. And he's like, I'm finished. And it's just like just deadpan, and I'm I'm just I'm like, oh, okay, he got you on that one. That was pretty good. Yeah, but we drop we'll be dropping that video next week. All right, get that to, to get yeah. to the to, to get to the other thing that the Canes have been very very good at, and this is where I was, I'll I'll just straight up say I was wrong about the obsession over goaltending. Freddie Anderson being back and being as locked in as he is really does bring home all those discussion points from earlier in the season as it relates to goaltending. Yeah. It unlocks something, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it it does, but also at the same time for Freddie, and I can't speak for him, but you go through what he went through. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you come back and you're like, well, this is just a game. You know, this yeah. is, I, I just, I, I'm lucky to do what I do. I'm just going to go play. And we saw it two years ago when Frederick Anderson got to Carolina. You know, his first, 10, 11 starts with the Canes where we're talking Vesna trophy with him. And, you know, this is going to be a guy who's going to anchor the net for years to come. His thing has always been health related and being able to stay on the ice. I don't think that the questions with Frederick Anderson, other than, and it's only in Toronto when you go playoffs, but then you have to question everybody who has gone through Toronto the last decade for, you know, <laughs> are you a playoff producer or not? Uh, but that was the the outstanding question. And then I think Freddie answered those questions last year mm -hmm. in the playoffs. You know, he was good. And he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sergei Bobrovsky mm -hmm. in that Eastern Conference final. What got unlocked for me was Pyotr Kochetkov. When it really, okay, here's the saddle. We're going to give it to you. Yeah. He took it. And in, in the questions that I had for, do you really need, do you have to have somebody else? Um, and they, they found Spencer Martin, who maybe the five most important starts, uh, that a goaltender will have for the Carolina hurricanes in, in one season because of, they could just, okay, we can get through this. We don't have to make a deal. We don't have to go out yeah. and overpay for someone. We can we wait for Freddie. Yeah. Exactly. We yeah. can wait to see how all of it shakes out. And then Anderson comes back in what? Seven Oh one Oh, I think it's 1.88 goals against a nine fifty one save percentage. Two shutouts, and it's not just against the bottom of the league. You know, it was a Montreal team that was playing better that he shut out. Uh, you, you take a look at, at how he just is able to put things together. I mean, uh, for uh, it was a Detroit team that was playing for their playoff lives that he shut out. Kochekov then doubles down and gives yeah. the shutout against Montreal the next night. So, again, the goaltending here for this team is it just always for me comes down to health, not how do they play, just how healthy they are. Health. Can go away quickly, though, yeah. as we know. And I guess that gets to my my overall big picture question as we look back on the regular season as it's wrapping up. Did we... Have we underrated the quirkiness of the Canes' regular season and how they've been successful oh, yeah. and whether or not this is something that actually is going to help them psychologically as they get in the playoffs? So look, man, we've dealt with this. We've dealt with that. We've had players gone. We've had players have to step up. Next man up mentality. Are we underrating the kind of quirkiness of the year? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I, and I mean, I hate to do this because everybody plays a schedule that at some point you're just like, what? Yeah. What yeah. Is people, this? And people get hurt. And, and, you know, injuries no, are no. part of it. Um, you know, it's a computer generated schedule, you know, and then there are a couple of versions. Like, I don't know if everybody understands that it's not, there's just one version of the schedule that gets spit out at, mm -hmm. you know, before the year starts. And that's what you go with. They hand them out and then, you know, teams will look at it and say, well, we really don't want to play on this day. We would rather play more here or you've got dates that are booked or you're trying to book things for the venues that you're, you play in all of those things. So sometimes the schedules, you'll look at one and you'd be like, wow, why did you reject that one? And you're like, oh, well, because this is going to be in your arena or how do you get four days off here, but you're going to play eight games in 14 days there. Mm -hmm. um, one, I do believe the computer is hell from 2001. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. <laughs> 
can't do that. Sorry, Almost Rod, got a spit take out of I, you, huh? Can't do that, Rod. You're going to yeah. be out in the West Coast oh, for two months. You you want to be healthy? I'm sorry, players. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's there's that, but I think that what the taxing part of the schedule did, the quirkiness. Uh, you you get to that, and maybe this is the turning. What was the turning point of the season? Oh, know. there we go. Um, maybe it's the players only meeting after they lose to Vancouver yeah. in December. Maybe it's the win that they follow that up with in, in Ottawa with the poke check on Brady Kachuk and Pyotr Kochetkov, you know, jabbing back at Kachuk as he's going by him. I just think that this team, the core team, who when Don Waddell says we really like our group, he was always talking about that core group. I think they got through that and they're like, all right, okay. Mm -hmm. not, nothing. If we get through this, this shouldn't derail us. But, you know, you have some guys who've been fighting through some things. We'll see. It'll be, now i got to go to the Zen philosopher. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens when you get to the playoffs. Because the one thing, I, I don't know if you guys know this now, sports gambling is now legal in the state of North Carolina. It is. It I is. have not really noticed a lot of advertisement for no, this. I wish someone would have told me. I, know, I, I, I was caught totally I mean, off guard. We, we, it was weird. I feel, weren't we just talking about that before Mike came in the studio? So, you, you were introducing people to your nerfy bets. Nerfy. And <laughs> I was telling them about my completely garbage NBA uh, parlay, $5 parlays to see if I can cash out on that, uh, which I have. I want to thank, I want to thank DraftKings for the new watch I just bought. But hey, anyway. Hey, but, you, you take, <laughs> I'm being serious, yeah, by know, the way. I know. You but you, <laughs> you take, wow. I, I swear, I think I'm the only it's person. It's just who, a Casio no, G shock. I, think, wrong, I think I'm the only person in North Carolina who does not have a, a gambling app on their phone. Okay, good for you. I, do I, I don't. I am. You go I'm, to Vegas enough. No, I do. Good. Exactly. I do. Uh, I really do. <laughs> like, eh, I'm oh, good. Mike's I here. That's hey, good. Hey, we you, wanted to renovate You better not floor. be the only one. All the other people who are employed by the Carolina Hurricanes oh. better have the right rules as well, because well, that's no. the last thing anybody needs. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, trust me, because we've gone down that road. But yes. You know, you take a look, and I think we just got sidetracked from uh, the the original thought I was having it about, about you know putting things together. Yes, uh, for this team, but I I would not when it comes to the playoffs. Here's the gambling tie-in: I would not bet in the NHL playoffs one penny because anything can happen every well, every year. They better because I put all of my bonus bucks <laughs> on the Canes, but all of my bonus bucks are on the Canes every year. By the way, five dollars right now can get you two hundred dollars. Uh, <laughs> Use the OG twenty four. Oh wow, OG we're all tying it together. Yeah, I'll tie, OG twenty four. Um, no, but the last president's trophy to win the cup was in thirteen. Yeah, the so Hawks, right? so please remain hot. Don't, don't get too don't, hot. Don't, but, don't get too hot. <laughs> but it it comes down to every year there is an upset in the first round of the playoffs. And yeah. when I say an upset, yeah. it's not the. Three, four. It's no, like Florida beating Boston. Two yeah. yeah. Columbus like, beating uh, Tampa. Tampa. Yeah. I mean, that happens. You can go all the way back to even when there was no salary cap. Mm -hmm. San Jose knocking out Detroit. Like that's it's just the way hey, that man, the first round the, of the playoffs. Who go. did the key? Who did the Canes beat to win the Stanley Cup in two thousand six? The Edmonton Oilers, an eight seed. Yeah. So it happens, man. Yeah. These are things that happen in the NHL. All right, dude, you got to get out of here before your street level parking goes. Oh, uh, and depending on where you parked in downtown Raleigh, they'll get you. Oh, no, trust me. I don't have park a, in the hot we, zone. We've discovered where the hot spots are. So I make sure that I don't park in those blocks anymore. 2930. Don't park at 2930. I have I have an unbelievable um, Cal Ripken like streak of going <laughs> and getting parking tickets. Oh, oh getting tickets. Getting tickets. Getting oh, tickets. Okay. All right, okay. well. I got one because I was parked <laughs> legally. But I was not six feet, feet away from yeah. the edge of the driveway. Oh, I had yeah. never heard of this. Rule. Yes, that's a I rule? got one of those. Yes, that's, that's see, like a that's picture. Not, that's not real. Yeah, downtown really? on uh, not Hargit, but that's not happening to me. Yeah, that's not happened to me. Can Winter and Hamer argue my way out of that one? No, damn it, because they literally get a little ruler out there. And, oh yeah, yeah. Brutal. Oh brutal. yeah. But sorry, we don't validate parking. We're not quite there yet. I'm sorry, sure Mike. we. Can. I mean, you could so get a ticket you know, you know what? <laughs> no, no, you literally just should have like some stamp with your faces on it. Oh, that would be <laughs> and great. That, that would, I mean, it doesn't do Why anything. It would validate in that. my what mind mean, that Mike? I was Look, I already argued a parking ticket. I did the classic walking up to my car while they were putting yeah, a ticket on the wiper. I was like, dude. He's like, he just gave me a shoulder. He basically Jordaned me like shoulder shrug. I, I already wrote like, the ticket, buddy. I'm, so I disputed it. And they're like, yeah, being you know late, you were caught up in court, you're XYZ. I was like, fine, whatever. 
It's still cheaper to pay a parking ticket, I, but whatever. Mm. I got a warning yesterday. I have no idea why. I've gotten two. Warning. Actually. I got a warning. I mean, I've gotten plenty of tickets. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know why they gave me a warning yesterday was of all a, this. But was it? A, did you use the promo code OG24 and you got a bonus <laughs> ticket? I, Ooh. I got a warning. I Maybe like, that's what we need five, to do. Five dollars on your first parking ticket gets you an additional two hundred dollars. <laughs> Which you you want to hear something related? Every time I get a parking ticket, I will lose my gambling bets that night. So yesterday, oh, wow. when I so yesterday because it's luck, it's karma, it's yeah, right, oh, right. Yeah. So yesterday I go out and I see this ticket and I'm like. I'm gonna lose all my bets again today. My my Seton Hall lock stock <laughs> stock steamer. Then I go. I find like two. I just put it in my pocket. I didn't even look at it. I come up to pay it yesterday, and it says warning. And I was like, I'm gonna double down on the pirate. Oh my. <laughs> yes, oh, they came Andrew home. Gaze and somewhere yes, is, is smiling for you. This is the it. shit I believe in, man. Oh, <laughs> I love it. As I well, you know, as well, you should. <laughs> It's why right. you should. Well, Mike, congratulations. We're in the home stretch. Yep. You're going to start seeing me a lot more at PNC Arena now. Woo! It's that time. You know it's that time of the year when I start showing up to the fifth floor of PNC Arena. Let's go. Now I know that where you guys are. I mean, I'll just start come, swinging my. Yeah, you, you should can come through anytime. Please. Man. You know how it is. Yeah, yeah. We'll do our uh, worst movie. We'll, we'll do our worst oh, sports yeah. movie draft. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm out of mugs, though. I will show. No, no, that's, <laughs> that's okay. Mike, I think your it's... coffee immediately goes to like 30% flavor in that mug. Mike, this is something, you know, Joe had a little real pack therapy yesterday yeah. talking about his uh, sports rider days yeah, yeah. and how he's kind of missing it. And and only he does not appreciate these things. Only you can appreciate oh. how it's still deep inside you, how you want to benchmark some topics. Oh, you know, <laughs> hey, I got an idea. Here's what we we're going to do. We could create this. <laughs> Out of this, the Canes Mount Rushmore of draft picks and reviews oh, to sign. Nobody's ever done that before, <laughs> ever. We're going to put together <laughs> the complete list. If For, you had to fill out a roster, but most who's, who's your starting okay. five? So you have twenty dollars. Here's oh, the five dollar oh. group. Here's the four dollar <laughs> group. Here's the three. Here's the two. Here's the one. But most importantly, Mike, it's not whether or not the content is good. Can you sell it? That's the key. Can part. you fit it into the eight minute window as well? That's true. We're gonna, do, we're gonna draft the best coaches in sports movie history. How can we put our how can we <laughs> yeah. that's, Ooh, that's a good one? I thought you were gonna give us like no, 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 that's good. You need summer, that's what we're gonna do. You need that's summertime what we're gonna do. fodder, but we have to do it the right way. We're gonna have to put our arms around this topic. Oh, yeah, that's what we're gonna have to Dang do. Hang on. Convince me <laughs> why we need to do this. Meanwhile, you're I can't tell even remember me. the hotline number. But, so, five five five. Call us. Meanwhile, five five I'm, five. Call us right now. I'm having somebody tell me that I gotta talk about some. It wasn't Dua Lipa. It was whoever. And like you guys should be talking about that. I'm like, you want us to talk about a sugar boo? Yeah, a pop sugar singer. Boo. No, no, no. But this is this is before Dua Lipa. Oh. I can't think of a huge caniac. Yeah. Well, of course she is. Of course. Um. And Trip actually knows her parents. Wait, what was I listening to? No, he does. I swear. No, I know. I know. You were setting him up. It wasn't. It wasn't President's Day, but oh, you said a, it was uh, Kong and Godzilla. Yeah, right. for, yeah. I was setting you up. Where are you? You're like you're sleeping over here. <laughs> but he had that's what Kong been a huge Kadiak for years. <laughs> It was beautiful. Because uh, the third period, I go down AP yeah. and I listen to you guys oh, yeah. while I'm watching because I have the file right at the buzzer. So, all right, man, All get right. out of here. It's, yeah, you have five minutes. Don't Thanks. get a ticket Thanks. later. <laughs> Parking people. <laughs> Parking <laughs> people. Not use KDX. No, no, they are <laughs> no. Not. Always, always a fun time with Maniscalco. And uh, you want to have a fun time outside. And once the weather starts to clear out, we're not dealing with the rain and the pollen goes away and it's warming up and you want to enjoy the outside of the backyard, you're going to want Mosquito Authority to keep those mosquitoes in check. Check them out online at bugsbite.com. And you can bundle and save right now by going to bugsbite.com, combining Mosquito Authority and Pest Authority, taking care of the outside of your house and the inside of your house. Uh, I actually need to contact Pest Authority because my kids have not been listening to me and Kelly about eating food where they're not supposed to be eating food. So guess what we have? Ants. You had an ant problem not that long ago. Anytime it gets warm, here come the ants, man. So check them out. It's bugsbite.com. Hayes Lancaster believes in saving you money, but he doesn't believe in contracts. So you can bundle and protect your number one investment, which is your home. Just go to bugsbite.com. Big thanks to Breeze Through. They had a cool event yesterday at the PNC Arena location. They had Mike O'Connell out there. 
with Jaden Taylor was also in the house. Um, I don't have the tweet in front of me, but one of our listeners was actually listening to the podcast while driving around and heard that that was going on at the breeze through and they dropped by, got some gas cards, took a picture. We love to see that. And we love breeze through for sponsoring us. Check them out. Breeze through.com. That was Tim. And he was like, he, I sent him a message like, Hey man, appreciate you. Like that, that actually means more to us than it does just about anything else. When, when our, our listeners support our sponsors, it's, it's huge for us. And I said, uh, yeah, I said thank you, and he's like, absolutely. Because it was quite hilarious how it all worked out. I sent a message to my state friends saying, "Breeze through has a sign up that says why not us." And then ten <laughs> seconds later, y'all said on the pod that they were doing an nil event. So I I pulled a U turn and I pulled in. I love that. So thank you, Tim. Appreciate. It. We really do appreciate you. I also love all the selections of wonderful meats at the Butcher's Market. Check them out: thebutchersmarkets.com. Locations across the triangle, uh, two in Wilmington, and. You, if I'm just saying, if you want to have a celeb- celebratory steak, go to go to the butcher's market. Uh, are you just tired from all the basketball? You don't have time to cook. You're not feeling it. No big deal because butcher's market has a bunch of prepared meals as well. They definitely come in clutch this time of the year. So again, thebutchersmarkets.com, thebutchersmarkets.com. You know how I keep saying that NC State being good at basketball is just good for business in general? Yeah. How many interviews have you done this week or the last couple of weeks related to NC State? Yeah. Done a few. Sure, yeah. I got a text from VEASAN yesterday, you know, out in Vegas. Like, hey, you yeah. want to talk some some NC State? Did you get to talk to Brent himself? Musburger? No, oh, okay. no, no. I, I, I was not. I was on uh, VEASAN primetime. And uh, one of our listeners, Matt, was like, wait a damn minute. Watching Beeson live. What the heck? Joe Ovis is on now. Yeah. Why not? State's good. So people are reaching out. I'll be on with ACC PM with Mark Packer and Taylor Tannenbaum later today on the ACC network. Although I am curious about the closed captioning on this where it, instead of Joe Ovis, it has like Joe Ovisis. Interesting. Whoa. And then you can follow me on Twitter. Obvious. Yeah. yeah my Twitter can be obvious from time <laughs> to time. That, that is, I'm not going to. I'm not going to fight you on that one. Definitely not going to fight you on that one. Go to the YouTube comments. How funny would it be if we got a championship game between NC State and UConn in both NCAA tournaments? Ooh. I don't think that's going to happen. Stranger things, though. I can see NC State UConn on the men's side of things. I just don't see it on the women's side of things, especially with South Carolina. South Carolina is just... I mean, South Carolina is good. I think State can beat them, but I, I worry that Caitlin Clark is too much for UConn. UConn's had a whole bunch of injuries and some other true. issues this year, That's true. And, and obviously having the best coach always helps, but uh, I feel like maybe I was uh, written in the stars. A Perhaps. Little bit there. Uh, from Tim, now that I think about it, was the Virginia play that lucky? Bank, yes, but Marcel instantly rebounds, head up, and pass to the best option. Everyone runs, get to gets to a great spot, and gets it off. That's a great team play. The technical on Burns was BS, and we and we were kicking. Yeah, uh, <laughs> listen, listen. The the bank was open there, dude. Come on. Yeah, the shot itself. Oh, Tony Bennett, like free brain freezing and not fouling, is actually up there on it the is. list too. But like not fouling, it was a clean look. To your point, yes, but the way that the ball banked in and swirled around that that's like. Almost a thousand percent luck, dude. From uh, this is a great username, Meat Tooth. I was 13 when State made their last final four. I'm 54 today. That is a long effing time. Yes, when you put it in that kind of context. Look, man, I was four. I was four years old. Nobody remembers any of that stuff. Yeah, nobody remembers any of that stuff. And let's see. From Michael, can you highlight where to watch the game in Raleigh? Best bars, watch parties, etc. What will be the best venue in Raleigh on Saturday? That is a good question. I think you kind of make it. You make what the place that you want yeah. it to be, right? Like I had a great time at Rialto this past Sunday. Uh, I'd love to do it again, but there's a scheduling conflict, so that doesn't look like it's going to be happening. Um, but I will say this: I, I feel like I'm going to go into work mode on Saturday mm-hmm. and actually like sit and watch. It, it was fun hanging out at the Rialto, but it was more of a party atmosphere. I feel like this is like, all right, let me sit down, make some notes, watch the game like I typically watch the game. Okay. Uh, that's how I'm going to be handling Saturday. I'll be doing the show from um, here Saturday. I, at the risk of giving it away, yeah, 
I will have just as I live to troll Roy Cooper. Mm-hmm. I will have a cardboard, a ripped cardboard, torn piece of cardboard that not only on one side says "Where's Duke," but on the other will say "Where's Carolina," because the Wolfpack is in the Final Four, and Carolina nowhere to be found. Duke. As Mac Tarjai once asked, nowhere to be found. So we will be reenacting that from whatever it is, State Farm Arena. I don't even know what it is. So yeah. you need to prepare and find the picture so that we can reenact. I just won't have any famous teammates around me. That's all. You've, this has unlocked something in you yeah. that I did not know. You got you to keep some old scores there, my friend. You got no, to keep, just, you gotta keep some old now, scores. Now, to be clear, <laughs> this is for fans. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, because yeah. like when you went on your drunk rant about Duke, I, I the next day I was like, yeah, you went a little hard in the paint. Because you like <laughs> you like to get on me sometimes. You're like, man, Joe, you really uh, you really gave it to him. You really, uh, oh, wow. I was got a little hot there. I was surprised you actually went after that guy the way that you did. And I'm thinking to no, myself. No, this was sp- 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 Specifically, okay. the Duke band from 1996. I see, and the crazies from '96. See. see you. Okay, I didn't so tell you the you story. Are, you are settling scores. Yeah, the, you are settling scores. The story was the first time I ever went to Cameron. Trauma dump, Joe. Yeah, Trauma first time dump. I went to Cameron. Yeah, they did the big high school chant, and they did if you can't go to college, go to state. Yeah, chant. yeah, 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 yeah. And it, which I would have found to be acceptable, except literally like two seconds later. They had certain members of the band go out and spell D U K E on the floor, and they had the E before the K, so they spelled it D U E K. So Joe Gillio, NC State student, is watching them after they were mocking my education. Like, how smart are you that you can't even spell Duke? Like, I can spell State. Okay. Maybe I do go to a big high school, but I can spell State. So that was very specific to those to that crew i apologize to anyone else who may have caught astray on that so gotcha gotcha yep. like i said some men would rather podcast than go to therapy yeah that's what we're here for yeah and then no there will be a uh i'll try to find the right font <laughs> i'll try to get the right marker for it but yeah there will be a where's duke where's carolina <laughs> all right that's gonna wrap it up for today's edition we're gonna do an og live tomorrow lauren brownlow is gonna hang out with us um, casual basketball fan Dimitri Ravanos uh, is going to be repping his Alabama Crimson Tide. Don't forget. Oh, yeah. Bama's a basketball school now. No. <laughs> Speaking of schools that don't deserve it. And we'll, try, and we'll do what? Where in the world is Joe Giglio? Tomorrow. We'll see you then. Mm-hmm.